Welcome back everyone. Today I'm taking a quick look at my old mining fleet carrier which is being decommissioned today. Mostly because I want to build a new one. But basically what this had was a shitload of salvage drones and uh, automatic loading and the station would feed the salvages in. I've talked about it before. It can load all of them in two goes. Oh, sorry, unload all of them in two goes. So the idea was to get them out quick. The first first line come out, and then the, you press a button and the second line filter in. It's all using like a stop-go system. So this will actually just pass on if there's room. If there if there's a, if there's a drone here, then it will stop this one here. And so that's how it will fill up the whole thing. It's the simplest way of explaining it. I will go through and make a video explaining exactly how we did this. But it's better to look at it in pieces. Because when it's all on the ship, you can't really see what's going on. If I go under here, there's a lot of connections. Um, which you can't really see right now. There they are. And it's actually really straightforward. Um... It launching makes it able to load another another uh, salvager. So in the end, it was really simple to set up, but um, it took a bit of getting right. Um, the offshoot is I was able to have a little uh, readout type thing here, just using the activators that are under each dock. I can explain that. That's pretty. That's pretty simple. But yeah, um, the drones themselves get fed in here from the station, which is opposite where this ship lives. Now, I'd like to make a much smaller scale version. Uh, this ended up being quite large, so I want to scale it down. But I'm just doing a quick roundup of some of the things which I've built, which are getting decommissioned, because like I said, I built them in the first couple of weeks and then refitted them over and over again. So that's the reason I'm going to rebuild it all. But yeah, we had a tractor beam with a stop, a stop beam just there, which you could um, stop the asteroid from moving. It's quite useful. All of these have got uh, the mining bonus chambers. I doubt you can see them now. And a double waffle design with two salvages. And like I said, the entire back is normally it would be in build mode you better see it but I'm not using build mode to look around today and then here would be the cargo area and you just unload it to your to your uh, station but I'm going to build a new factory and I'm going to build uh, new salvage ships and all that good stuff I also had my defense fleet on the back which I will do a video on um, but I think there's a better way of doing it so this was fun. It was a cool first build for a mining ship, but I think I can do better. Um, and like I said, there was just loads of salvages, so I'm thinking I might change change it up. Change it up. Um, so that is the Thirsty Fleet, and the Thirsty Fleet is about to go. Go. Okay. Can we get out of here? Sure. Thought I'd do a little bit of uh, cleaning up around my home sector because I got lots of stuff just sort of here. So I'm going to be removing a few things. I'm going to delete the factories that fed these two docks as well because I won't be needing them. Got rid of my grill farm because I'm going to make a better one that's smaller. It's all about making everything smaller, uh, to be honest. Smaller is always better. So, but yeah, the, the this particular ship is the carry most. And the carry most is my defense, my defense carrier that I built in my first week back. These turrets also I built in my first week back. So yeah, they're crap. Um, but basically I wanted to load everything from one point so I shot everything off the factories which you could just about see down there 
and there were factories making this particular drone it uses the exact same system as the last so you can see it a little bit better it looks more complicated than it really is I mean I'm gonna go through how this works in a separate video so I don't want to pad out the time of this one um, but you've got the same system of uh, a loading display and then you've got obviously all the drones they all fly out these are all lock-on missile drones because it was the longest range and they can't miss so I figured hey if they can actually shoot they might actually hit something so I think there's 18 of them in here and they're quite small which makes them very fast um, but yeah uh, you fire the first rack and then you press a button and it'll load the ones behind into the firing position and then you fire them too when they all come back they tended to bounce into each other a lot on the pickup rail. So what I did in the end was I told them to come back to formation and then idle. To idle in formation, then idle. And then I just turned my ship and flew the magnetic dock under each of the ships. And you know what? That was quicker because they don't bounce into each other. Huh? So you just literally pick them up, wait for it to go in, pick it up, wait for it to you know, go forward, and there's the next one. Brr. So, to be honest, yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, this was a pretty cool, pretty cool little ship. Uh, didn't really do much with it in the end. Obviously, I took it out fighting a few times, but I'd like an excuse to make a new one. So, it's going to go. It's got to go. It's got to go. It's got to go. Why did it just select that? I'm trying to select that. The mouse is being weird today. There we go. It's gone. I've already deleted four of my Gundam statues. Oh yeah, here's something else I made the other day. I've been messing around with... I've been messing around with these again. But the new systems are a bit different. certainly seems that some of the penalties that used to affect weapons are gone, but then it's probably been completely changed so they didn't need it. I don't know. There used to be a nerf for cannon weapon groups. Well, I don't see that. Unless, like I said, the whole check, the whole system has changed. Which it may have done. Uh, yeah. Yeah, these are just prototypes that I've been messing around with. Like I say, they're not amazing. It's mostly just one of my test reactors. And then built a combo system in. I mean, it's alright. Can it shoot? It can shoot. But it's not stable. Oh well, maybe it is. It doesn't look like it. Oh well, no, I don't know. It's for show though. There are only one block groups. So it's just for show. That won't do anything to anyone really. Uh, this one has got a much larger reactor. I found I can make this one completely stable, but um, the downside is you've only actually got like one one group of guns. Where are they? Yeah, look, I've only got like one group of guns, which and it's not even a full. It's just the outline. It's just like the edge of the box. In fact, if I just shoot from that angle. But it's stable. And these groups actually have a decent size to them, so they might actually do something. Regardless, I'm just messing about with that. Uh, grill farm's gone. Oh, yes. 
So something I never showed everyone. I showed people this, but I don't think I've done a video on it. So I made this, <clears throat> which is doesn't look like much, right? It just looks like a weird what the hell? Well, it's a tuck. So if I go into build mode, you can see it. Uh, that will go into a ship or through a ship, and one of these areas they all. Uh, intersect so it's like a big magnet grab and so you can pick up uh, like a cargo pod or something I, I'll show you so we're gonna fly over to near my salvager I will just select my salvager and I'll eject it right? I'll eject the cargo pod because that's the whole point uh, so if I just teleport over to the salvager and get out of it now I'm in the salvager Tug should be over there, and there it is. And that's my cargo container. So the difference with this salvaging ship is it automatically loads into this cargo container using the loader system. You've got like a little thing there with where the uh, where the actual storage is, but this will all fill up with storage space. Okay. But when it's full, you want to release it. I go in here, I've got the uh, things, so there's eject, so now if I turn around, you'll see it's getting ejected, so if I just get in the tug real quick, there we go, so that would be ejected into the station where it's going to unload all the materials to the factories, and then I'd click a button to eject the container from the station, in the same way all it is is the unloader turns into a left rail and then there's a launcher there that you can't see okay so if I just jump into my tug ship so if you remember the tug it's like a key so if I just sort of fly with the nose over the top I know that the docker is sort of roughly around there oh. There we go, got it, All right? So I just have to fly roughly over where it is. You might be thinking, okay, that's cool, but how are you gonna put it back? Well, I've got a launcher, so I can turn this from a grabber into a launcher. Now you see all those, all those lines in front there? All of them? If I go into build mode, let's see what I've done. So I've done the same thing on the back of my ship. It's like a little fin made of pickups. And they're all spaced apart so that they're three by three, you know, so that you've got a complete grid there. So then obviously what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna aim into the grid and do it from this side, because for some reason, I know it works from this side. I don't know what happens if you put it in a different way, but uh, certainly this works. So here we go. So I'm gonna go in here hit the launch and it goes and there it is and so we'll go on to the ship he says ah it's a bit of lag it does that sometimes oh my god 8,000 ping Brrr. I think it might have been auto saving or something anyway it does that sometimes but it's actually fine. Okay. So, dock up the tug. Uh, is that going to be a good thing for me? Oh, what happened? Is it dead? What? What the? Um, maybe that's not a good place for me to talk about. Hang on. I got an idea. Um, I had this problem before where some ships actually had like a, a nose mount on the front face rather than the bottom face. So then of course my ship is vertical, which means that 
Dave can't get out because he's trapped between. But that's fine. See, what I did was I made an activation module. If you see here, I got two activation blocks. And what it's going to do is if I just zap that one, it'll turn this unloader into a front face rather than a top face. I don't know if you can see what happened there. I'll just I'll zap it back the other way. So if I zap that block, well, my nose is too big. See how it changed to a top face unloader? And then I've got another one there. So it's like, oh, I'm in a different ship. There we go, it changes to that one. Simple stuff, really, but, you know, useful. Now I can get out. Because I've got a stupid, um, it's my fault for the way I've designed it, really, but, you know. Okay. So, the salvager, I've showed you the cargo. Um, it's just got a really compact array. I think what I should do is get rid of the second array and just make the first array a bit wider so it covers the silhouette of the asteroid a little bit better. It's a bit weird because it's not quite wide enough. Having it tall is useful, but I, I was going with like a barcode scanner type idea where I'd actually fly left and right um, when I'm mining. But anyway. Right, so the next thing of course telling you what's going to happen in the next one. So, am I actually... There we go. So, these things are the block shops. So, we've got a video coming out on them. Uh, we've released the blueprint in the StarMade dock. And what these allow you to do is exchange one of our ducats, which is one of our mods, for transporter beacon. So, you put your ducat in here of the type it's listing. And then you'd get the meta item, so in this case a transporter beacon. Um, we also had lots of other things, but that's how we got it set up. So, I mean, I was just giving examples for uh, people that don't use ducats. They could use like a Bastin crystal block, or you could use a one metal grill for something you don't, you know. Just, you're just giving out helmets, right? So, anyway. And like I said, these are going to be at the welcome stations. So you're likely to see something more like this. Maybe decorated a bit better. Man, my mouse is not going up and down today. Maybe it's just the uh, thrust ascent. I don't know. So here's an example of a finished shop area. Or finished, when I say finished, it's like you know, the first one. So I'm selling a sniper rifle for a silver, I'm selling uh, one of my race ships for the solar regatta, which is coming up in a couple of days. Um, that there is one is 10 million grills, which is one silver, and then here we got meta items like the log book, the helmet. These ships, will, these, uh, these shops will get moved to the welcome station when it's done, but obviously we're in no rush, so, you know. Don't even, don't even trip. It's all good. I've also got a little bit of a parkour area over here where we were experimenting with gravity tubes. Might as well show you that real quick before we finish this one. So here we have gravity tubes. So you fall through them. Oh. And when you get to the end, you can either hit that one to return to normal, or you can just go to the next one and return. So it's like a functional one by one Jeffrey's tube. Pretty cool. Probably useful for getting around. You don't have to do them like this. I, I just did them like this for fun. I did try making it a bit bigger, but I think it works better when it's super compact. So, you know, one by one tunnels around your ship, you can make Jeffrey's tubes, but once you get big like this, it gets a bit, I don't know, a bit funky. Don't know why. I'm sure it'll work if it was longer, but just doing it in that size, it was like a bit jarring because you're constantly rotating your head everywhere. Anyway. Oh yeah, space crew's coming along quite nicely. I may as well give you a little uh, 
little uh, demo on that. So this is the Space Cruise ship. The concept was to make infinite interiors. So most of the interiors are actually in the dish, okay? But they're all built on a separate entity and then copied in. So I don't actually build any of them on the ship. And then if I run out of room, it doesn't matter. I'll just end up with this full of interiors. And then it doesn't matter really because, you know, if you're recording, it's like TV, you know. The rooms aren't actually in a spaceship, so it's all done in edit. There's that. And then everybody thought it was a Star Trek ship that was upside down, but no. This is my hangar. And there's my race ship. There's usually a shuttle in there. I don't know what happened to the shuttle. It's not good. We've lost the shuttle. Right, and as I lose command of my controls, uh, I may as well tell you about the Amato. So, Smedic came back. Yeah. Joe Jaquinta made a return and gave us a new Smedic. And using it, I got a Thingiverse. 3D print STL file, use Blender to rotate it correctly, and put it into uh, Smedit, converted it. This is a double scale Yamato, so it's not one to one, it's bigger than that. Um, I wanted a test ship at our maximum limit, so it's not at the block count, but it is at the dimension count for our server. This is the biggest you're allowed to have which is a sum dimensions of 1,000, just add X, Y, and Z. Don't get triggered, that's how we do it. Um, and one million blocks, but you can get oversized ship licenses and pay for them with grills, because we don't do any kind of real transaction on our server. We only do in-game, and you can buy everything with grills. Ducats are basically compressed grills, and then we have a fed where you can deposit those ducats. So in the event of complete server loss, you don't lose all your wealth. It also means you don't have to worry about max integer limits or credits, because obviously blocks are a much greater store of wealth. But yeah, the Yamato's coming along okay. A few things I noticed was that uh, point defense doesn't really work anymore. Um, I don't know if it's just because they don't like only having a single axis turret anymore. Like they do move, but they never fire. So I'm going to convert them to two axis, even though it's a little unnecessary, but I'll, I'll do it. Um, it'll just look weird, so I'm coming up with a solution for that. Everyone told me to turn the cannons into proper cannons, like proper turrets, which I did. And they do one-shot pirates. However, they're derpy. And this is one of the reasons I didn't like. People say, oh, if you don't want it to move far, just put something in the way. Hmm. Yeah. Well, the thing is, sometimes Star Maid just does what it likes. And as you can see, we've got some turrets clipping through the mothership. Uh, it's not too bad, but, you know, they sometimes they just stop moving after that point. But yeah, they, they look pretty good, so can't complain. I uh, did some work on the weapons. We had, um, we did some changes to weapons, but we are going to be increasing the ranges on a couple of weapons now. So we're still finding a nice balance. But yeah, that's pretty much all I've got for you today. Uh, we've cleaned up my home base a bit, which is nice because it was getting a bit laggy with all of the ships I had here and all the entities. I've cleaned all that up. And actually, I've those two as well now. Because they're very much just tests. But yeah, my long-term projects are still back here. I've got to delete these factories because we don't need them anymore. Um, but then we're back on course. So yeah, that's just a quick short update on some of my build projects for you guys. Uh, there will be more like this. And you can expect the server setup tutorial. That'll be coming very soon. Um, I'm just finishing up. There's going to be full source 
on GitHub. So you'll be able to do whatever you want. Uh, you'll be able to set any value for any any block behavior. So you want guns to do this much damage with this much range, with this much reload, with this much power draw. You can do all of that. And I'll show you how to do it in a way that doesn't require you to do it every single time they update the game. We're using their own uh, custom behavior and custom block um, import method, which means that when the game updates, it imports your changes over the top. So it's the best way to do it. Um, and it's how we do it on our server. Like I say, it very, makes it very easy to manage things because it's very difficult to keep track of complex changes to a server when they may be reset. And it's a lot of work to go through and compare. So you shouldn't do it that way. A lot of people just go straight into the data config and edit them there. And then they wonder why they're having to change things again and again. And it's because that's not what you're supposed to do. Um, but yeah, we're going to explain how to do that. And um, there'll be a little mini series on that. You can already find all the links in our Discord. So if you go to our Discord, you'll be able to see all of our GitHub projects. One of them is the best universe, and it'll have all of our configs in there. So, like I said, this time around, we're going to share everything we find. I mean, we kind of did before, but it'll be a little bit more comprehensive this time. So... Um, We've also got the green screen mod, the Duckets mod, the Flora Factory mod up on the StarMade dock and in the mod browser. So by all means, check them out. The green screen is a green screen. The Flora Factory is <laughs> a factory that makes flora. Um, and Duckets are basically compressed grills. So I think there might be another one now, but I uh, feel bad that I don't remember. Anyway, um, maybe it's just not out yet. Who cares? So yeah, see you on Discord, discord.io slash mushroomfleet, uh, twitch.tv slash mushroomfleet, and here on youtube.com slash mushroomfleet. So yeah, look forward to seeing you guys. There's going to be more soon. I think, I think I got it covered. <laughs>